Sandra. Yo. I have a question for you. Uh, shoot. It's it's about a, a thing we, we talked about a little earlier that I just wanted to bring up on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, if per se I was to offer you several different loaves of garlic bread mm. and uh, you had the option of cooked, destroyed with fire, yeah. not cooked, or frozen to the core, which would you prefer? What sort of day is it? Like what month of the year? Uh, let's say right now. Right now, right now. Uh, look, I have to go for the only the only logical choice, and uh-huh. that be a frozen piece of garlic bread. Why is that? Please yeah. explain. I love me some frozen garlic bread. <laughs> it is unlike anything else I have ever put my mouth on. Okay, just 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 add that out there. Welcome, Tommy, <laughs> but a goodie. The show where <laughs> we uh, we talk about garlic bread, yeah, for like an hour, but also about movies occasionally. I'm Sometimes. Zach. This is um, the ice garlic muncher, mm. uh, Sandro. In fact, I'm eating one right now. <laughs> yum 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 yum. <laughs> How cinematic. Um... <laughs> Yeah, today we're going to be watching uh, something that is also rather cinematic and uh, rather funny. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was uh, unfaithfully yours. Uh, what do you think? First impressions, Sandro. First impressions are, this was very fun. I liked it a lot. I agree. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. It, it, was, it was nice to have a few, few of them ha-has, a few of them mm. laughy boys. Mm. I was like, ha-ha. This is a joke. I like it. There were some good jokes. There were some good uh, setups and punchlines that took place over 20 or so minutes. Like long, long drawn out setups. Yeah. Very good. I liked the ending. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I liked it. I liked it a lot. I thought that was very good. I thought it was a very good way of doing things. I prefer the original ending based off the original movie. From oh, okay. the 40s, which I also well, I... saw, and I also think is very good. Better than yeah. this. I think a lot of the reviews said that one was better. Yes. But this one was still okay, so we'll have to talk about it later. Hmm. There are many, many differences. Uh, but would you say, if you don't want to be spoiled, go and watch it? Would you say that that's a thing people should do? Yeah, yeah, I'd say go watch it. For sure, for sure. This was your choice, uh, it, which would imply that you had a choice. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't exactly have many options, unfortunately. No, you had this film and also this film. This film. film. <laughs> but I have to say, uh, I'm okay with that. Yeah. So far, this choice has been better than three of the other choices. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm happy we watched this film. I, I, I like a good comedy. Mm. I like a comedy that uh, is targeted towards audience that is the one to laugh. Yes. Uh, rather than 40-year-old woman. See last episode. Oof. Um, uh, we got feedback before we jump ooh, into it. Feedback. feedback about this movie. What? Da, da, da. It's from Ben Volchok. <laughs> oh, wait, no, it's Ben. He's the one person that knows things about movies. Ben says, uh, I watched Unfaithfully Yours, the original, but also the remake. Not as bad as everyone has said, really. I thought it was very good. Nothing great, but very light. It was fun. Casts were great. I don't think it captured the uh, frantic or, like, manic nature of the original or how silly that film is. It was a lot softer, but I still liked it. I'd give it a not baddie. Ben, it's oldie or a goodie. That's our rating system. Yeah, um, you need to figure that one out. I mean, <sighs> you're really pushing this not a baddie thing, and I feel like it's just not going to catch on. Yeah, honestly... Unless I start using it. Then it might catch on. Yes. But I won't release the episodes. <laughs> wow. Wow. You're holding the episodes hostage over this. Wow. You are really passionate about it. Now nah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our rating system is already garbage, so it doesn't really matter. No one cares. Yeah. It's like we live in a world where everyone cares about ratings and we don't. So we don't. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's a good time. It's a great opportunity to not be following the popular things and yeah. doing our own stupid garbage. I bet exactly. that's a great strategy for getting more listeners. 
I think our the content of our review should be what makes you decide whether or not to watch it instead of us being like, yeah, three stars. <laughs> uh, yep, uh, I give this movie uh, two and a half stars, like I have the past uh, ten movies. Just make up your own mind. It's, it's, that's, what your, yep. that's what your review basically says. Yep, you nice. figure it out. Go watch it. Uh, but hey, speaking of Ben, he'll be back on the podcast after Comedy Ooh. Festival, so keep a look out. But we do have guest episodes coming up. Let's get into the movie. Yes. So it was released on the 10th of February. Uh, again, opened against absolutely nothing. It is directed... Nice. By Howard Zeff. And we have seen a film by Howard Zeff before on the podcast. Oh. He directed we? My Girl 2. Oh. A movie that I thought was fine and you thought was also fine, but gave it an oldie. <laughs> yep. Because stuff it. Um, He retired after My Girl 2, which we did uh, on the show. That was 1994. Uh, and then he passed away in 2009 uh, due to Parkinson's. But he's a he's a good director. I've liked everything I've seen from him so far. So, yep. good on him. I, uh, I also liked most of the things. I mean, uh, the movie was all right. It wasn't yeah. really that bad. We've seen much worse films since then. So, I kind yeah. of regret giving that one an oldie. <laughs> Oh well. And it is based off a movie of the same name, Unfaithful Yours. Came out in 1948, as I mentioned. I did watch it. It's pretty good. Uh, mm. It is written and directed by Preston Sturges, who makes a lot of these like screwball comedies from yep. the 40s, 50s, maybe the 60s. I'm not sure. But like nice. that early era. Uh, he does yeah, one of those. Yeah, yeah. He's good. And, and I've heard, like, I looked at a lot of reviews and I've heard a lot of things. People say that the old movie was better. Uh, it is. In okay. pretty much every single, or not not every single way, there's one thing that I like more in this film, and that is the masks. The masks are great. Ah. Yeah, yeah, no, the ma- oh my gosh, we'll get to the mask. That was amazing. That 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 was wow. As we go through the synopsis, I'll point out what the main differences are, but it's there's not many. Uh, okay. I think you know the original is just clever because it came up with the idea, and this. I didn't. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it was clever because it thought, let's rehash a popular movie to get, get more money. Exactly. Which has never been done before. No. And not done since. Not ever has no. m- movie franchises have been rehashed to milk the franchise of all its Star Wars. I mean, money. Um, uh, yeah. It would be great to live in a world where there aren't any Terminator sequels. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from yes. the second one. Yes. Imagine that, living Ooh. in a world where we actually cared about original movies. Arnold in the last one was really good. I don't know, that film was fine. Was, yeah, it was a fine film, which is better than a garbage film. Ah, uh, no. I prefer I prefer a train wreck. I prefer Cats, a film <laughs> that oh, is oh, absolutely That's going to get you a lot of flack for that one. <laughs> I prefer a movie that is just a hit <laughs> and a miss compared to a film that is right, like a small yeah, tap. <laughs> That's fair, that's fair. Um, but also, Cats was the worst cinema experience I've ever had. <laughs> the studio yep. was like, everyone sing along, and the audience was dead quiet until Ian McKellen showed up and everyone cracked up. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Especially if they wanted people to sing along in the audience. Good yeah. lord. It was, it was to incredible. Get audience participation in a movie theatre is actually the worst thing I can think of. Like, I remember... We went to one screening of some random movie. I can't remember what movie mm. it was. But at the end, the guy the guy running the thing started clapping and not a single person joined him. Oh, that was, was um, just him. Was that Mary, Queen of Scots? Yeah, saw yeah, it at like it was. 10 a.m. That was a pretty good movie. I <laughs> liked right. that movie. Yeah, yeah but no one's going to clap. <laughs> Clapping at the end of a movie is a dumb <laughs> thing to do. Unless, unless someone who worked in the film is there in which clap. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, you're clapping them, not the, the not the movie. No. So, well, you're still clapping the movie, I guess. But still, yeah, no, I wouldn't clap them. I'd say okay. stuff them. <laughs> I'd be sitting there in the audience with my arms crossed like, you don't clap in a movie theater. <laughs> you're doubling down. <laughs> oh, absolutely, I'm doubling down. Let's double down. This is the double down episode. Nice. And we should double down on getting a move on to the episode. <laughs> the cast. All right, for the main character, whose name is Claude Eastman, we have got Dudley Moore, very popular British comedian, actor, nice. also yes. musician. very good. Uh, he passed away in 2002. Very sad, but he was really popular. Mm. He's in a film called Arthur. You've probably seen it. It's very popular. He's also in Mickey and Maud, as well as The Adventures of Pet Torture. I mean, The Adventures of Milo and Otis. 
He's in that oh. as well. Wow, yeah, he's been in a lot of things. Yeah. He was the main guy, yeah? Yeah, the, yes, in this film. Because cause I think I've seen him in something else, but I couldn't remember what it was. He's been in so much stuff. Yeah, but it, yeah. by the sounds of it, he's been in so many, so it's not gonna it's not gonna help if I if I try and figure out where he's on. But he was very good. I I, I very much liked him. Yeah, he's. And fun. I thought they were very good musicians as well. I thought he was. Yeah, well, he know. is an actual conductor like, and yeah. composer. So yeah, he was very good. I don't know if he played his own violin in that scene, but it looked like he did, and that was cool. Yeah, I hope he did because that was very good. Violin's a pretty easy instrument to fake playing, though. <laughs> That is true. You Might be the easiest one. around. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Um, and also, look up the behind the scenes for Milo and Otis, because that is messed up. Oh, okay. <laughs> what? What? Uh, please, do tell. I mean, they literally threw cats off cliffs for that movie. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That's not good. Yeah. Yeah, it's not... No, it's, 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 it's awful. It's awful. Ah, but fun fact about throwing cats off uh, things. Mm. If you go uh, more than five stories, mm. um, the injury rate uh, stays the same. Wow. But if you if you throw them slightly lower, the chance of injury is higher. Oh. Throwing them higher. So maybe throwing them off the cliff, the humane thing to do. I am I mean, there was water underneath it, so no. <laughs> oh, no, not <laughs> Uh, but you knowing that information scares me. Let's move on to... <laughs> it was a, it was a fact on a quiz show. Nice. Anyway. That's fun. Uh, playing his wife, Daniela, is Natasha Kinski. I also She's... tested it out. Um... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on her as well. On a human. Uh, it was uh, weird. Y- yeah, no. Uh, and then I actually tested it on cats. And I was oh, like, right. man, okay. I shouldn't have started with a human. Oh, cool. you're the that guy was... who released the cat video and don't f with cats on Netflix. Yes. You I actu- are Luke no, and I actually helped co-create Cats the movie <laughs> uh, by throwing the actors off off um, five story buildings. <laughs> Somehow that's more of a crime than you killing cats and putting them on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the filming of cats, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so playing his wife, Natasha Kinski, she's been in movies like Tess, um, Paris, Texas, and also a film called Cat People. Speaking of cats, she's in a movie <laughs> hey, called Cat it's People. it's all full circle. It's all full circle, because uh, Cat People is apparently an erotic thriller, so... Oh, <laughs> just like the cats of today. <laughs> exactly. Playing uh, the other musician, whose name is Max, or Maximilian Stein is his full name, the actor for that is Armand Ascent, who just plays a lot of mobsters. He always plays yeah. mobsters. Yeah, he looks like a bit of a mobster. And yep. does uh, he does he play music? Is he a no, instrument boy? No, right, not that I so could he, tell. Yeah, so he he must have been fiddling away. And by that you mean not. No. Anyway, uh, and then finally we've got an actor called Albert Brooks. He's in this as well. He plays a character called Norman Robbins, who is Claude's mm. friend. Uh, he's Marlon in Finding Nemo. What? Really? Wow. Yeah. Um, he's also in a film called Drive, and he voices many characters in The Simpsons. So, huh? Yeah, there he's you good. go. He's the guy who. Um, yeah, got cucked. Yeah, to keep an. Yeah, yeah, that as well. Yeah. <laughs> That's his key character point. Come on, <laughs> don't, don't, don't go past it. Come on. Uh, it, this has got twenty-seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Woof. The lowest uh, critic score we've had this year so far. Definitely not deserved <laughs> no. at all compared to some of the other tosh we've been watching. Well, most of those don't have critic scores. They've only got audience scores. But oh, even saying right, that, the true. audience score is 46%, which is lower than most of the films we've done. <laughs> yeah. So. That's a bit unfortunate. Come on, this yeah. film was all right. I six, quite like this film. Six it's, out of ten on IMDb. I think it, it's got the, the big brother sort of fallacy where everyone looks at the big brother and goes hey he's great and then they look at this one and he's like hey, he's all right but he's not his brother so yeah exactly like it is a remake that is a it it's it's better than most remakes but it's still a remake mm. so it's like what does it really add it cost them 12 million dollars to make what do you think it made in the box office uh oh it was a, it was a remake of a popular movie 30? Popular movie, but the first one didn't do too well, and it, oh, did it, it not? is regarded Ooh. a classic like a decade after it was released. So I'm going to say 20. Oh, yeah, exactly, 20. Boom, did it, see? That extra info, it got me in. Yeah. I got it. Once he had explained yeah. that, I was like, ah, I can download the people. I can mm-hmm. figure it out. 
20 yeah. million which uh as usually you go to double the budget for like advertising and that sort of stuff yeah but, but that's still like, all right at least it at least it made more yeah than than what it cost supposedly so yeah probably i wish it had, i wish it had made a bit more but mm. yeah because it's been better than the other trash but anyway yep the opening it, yeah. yeah i like the opening it, it yeah. opens in like an empty theater as the orchestra are all like walking off the streets into the building and stuff like unpacking it's cool yeah, yeah, it's good. I love the uh, the opening music. Mm. It's this this uh, that sort of uh, hypey uh, orchestra, the old orchestra playing, uh, very eighties sort of orchestra as well. Yeah, they've all got um, mullets. So yeah, uh, we see Claude Eastman as the conductor. He's such an animated conductor, which is what I loved mm. about the first one. Whenever yep. he's conducting, he's really into it, and Dudley Moore does the same thing. He's so into it. His face like constantly changes. It's great. Yeah, it's, so yeah. Good. it's very good. It's very like, hey, he's conducting them. Mm. I can believe that. Uh, and he's also narrating as well. Yeah, yeah, because he has plans for this evening. Mm. His plans are to kill his wife. Bum bum bum. bum, bum. Will he find out this episode on Oldie but a Goody? Uh, it then cuts to. A couple of weeks ago, is it? Or days ago? Well, yeah, like one week, maybe. Something like that. Not yeah, long yeah, yeah. before. Not, not too long before. Uh, whether at an airport. Yes. He's just come back from a big, long tour over in England. Yeah, yeah, because he's a famous boy. He's very popular. Everything's, everything's looking up. It's, it's yeah. good. And then he, and then he f- finds his wife. There's a bit of shenanigans happening. They're talking about all the things. Mm. His friend's worried that he's too stressed because he's like, man, it's really getting to you. I mean, why would you try and hire a detective to look after your wife? Yeah. Uh, and he's like, I did what now and then we get the big reveal that what he told his friend to do was keep an eye on daniela while he was gone which somehow somehow norman took to mean hire a detective yes well they they have the uh the is he russian or danish or something oh yes a yes. sort of butler and he uh he doesn't speak great english no and he thought he meant hire a private eye mm-hmm. to watch her instead of keep an eye. Yeah. So, yeah. See, that character is entirely original to this film. In the original, it's just a misunderstanding. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I think... Ooh. I think adding racism to it really improves... <laughs> I mean, it's it's a fair it's a fair call for yeah. someone to have a uh, you know language barrier and stuff. He um, English is a garbage language. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the butler speaks the same language as the wife, though. So yeah, it's um, not as bad, but still. So Italian? <laughs> Some, this is a... Am I racist? <laughs> anyway, there's there's a misunderstanding, and they hire a detective. And then the the the, the private investigator he does rock up. He's yep. got something in his hands that he has to hand. To the brother, who then goes to give it to to Claude, to Eastman, whatever name you want to use mm. f- for him. And then Norman, like, he drops hints to Claude. He's like, hey, mm. do you ever think about sleeping around? Random question. Just going to ask you that. By the way, yep. while we're on that while we're on that train of thought, do you ever think, um, do you ever think Daniela, you know, thinking about sleeping around as well? And if she did, do you what want to know? A, what, about, what about a hypothetical? Yeah. What about a- Hypothetical woman that was young that you were married to hmm. that was s- sleeping around. Would what if you... we had a hypothetical, yeah. hypothetical situation where your wife was banging a dude? Would you want to know? Would you want your your friend, your hypothetical friend, to just hint to you or tell you or give you the evidence he has on him yeah. of that? Because uh, he accidentally hired a detective. Because <laughs> he accidentally hired a detective. But but it's it's gonna be revealed that detective he he found some evidence yeah, uh, yeah. evidence that's... of his wife banging the dude and that is in the envelope uh, which Norman hands to he hands to Claude and Claude's like it's not my place I'm just gonna tear this up yep I'm gonna Put tear it, it up don't even care if my wife's sleeping with another dude don't even don't even care why would I even care doesn't even matter no. I should be blessed. Just to have her as my wife. Totally. And, 
of course, Norman, he's like, wow, that's so mature of you. Wow. Yeah. That's so great. Anyway, I'm just going to hop in this taxi and leave so mm. that you can, uh, you can do whatever you want. So he does. Yeah, he, um, he totally walks away and uh, the rest of the film doesn't happen. Yep. But then, Sandro. Yeah. He turns around. Oh, no. Runs all the way back to the trash can. Grabs the, the papers out of the trash. Yep. And he's Funny like, um, I'm going to read this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back home and then I'm going to read it. But then, uh, you know, he has to sneakily put it in the bin because his wife walks in. then through just a lot of just slapstick. Just a lot of slapstick mm. moments of him trying to hide it. Uh, it. It ends up in the trash compactor. It's unreadable. Just yeah, destroyed. yeah, yeah, because because uh, good old uh, the the manservant comes in and takes out the trash and he's like, no, don't take the trash out. Yeah, and then he has to run in, but then it's covered in compost. He can't even read the name of the detective anymore. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's an absolute disaster. So he decides that uh, he he's he, he's going to go over to the private mm. investigator's uh, place of work. And yep. and tell him that he's there to make sure all the other copies of the papers are destroyed. He doesn't want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to know. I don't. I don't want to know. I don't ah. want any evidence. Why would I even want that? I would be blessed to just just even look at my wife. Yeah. Ever. Just ever. Just, so just he goes over bit. to the detective. By the way, I love the detective. <laughs> he's um, great. He's really good. Who is he played by? I'm not uh, sure. Just, I'm not sure. Just throwing it at you. Go look it up because he's really good. Um, in um, the original, the detective is a massive, massive fan of his and gets like free tickets to the concert and stuff. Oh, nice. That's really good. I like that. But he's good in the remake as well. Um, yeah, he's I'm also very good in this. Trying to I th- find I out what his name very is. Good. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go look it up while I distract the audience. Hi, audience. It's me, Zach, your favorite co-host of this show. <laughs> Smooth. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's played by Richard B. Shull. Wow, you knew that off the top of your head. Impressive, Sandro. <laughs> He's been in a movie called Cockfighter, where he plays a leading role as a business partner. Oh, oh, okay, nice. He's nice. also Robin Williams' boss in Seize the Day. Oh, and he was in that Tra- Trapped in Paradise movie we did last year with hey. Nicolas Cage. Very nice, very nice. I like him. I like yeah. him a lot. Good boy. Anyway. So the detective is all like, oh, you're being very responsible. Wow, uh, that's so impressive. I couldn't do the same. Mm. My dog's hungry. Just yeah, 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 dog that's in the, the podcast Big Dog. He drops a hint that there's also a tape that he's got that uh, he's like, oh, yeah, and I suppose you want to destroy the videotape as well. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. No worries. So the tape, the tape shows that uh, there is a man. We mm. don't know. Who he is. No, because half the recording is, like, blurred and fuzzed out Um, for plot reasons. But we do see a man uh, walking into uh, his apartment, I believe, at 1.30 a.m. And the investigator is like, 1.30 a.m., that means something. Because the only things that are broken in the middle of the night are the hearts of older men like us. The only thing (laughs) late at night that is broken... It's the old hearts of men like us. And he's like, okay, I'm yeah. going to leave now. But uh, due to uh, just real, like, real high-tech CSI level zoom-in technology. <gasps> and enhance. And enhance, exactly. They and notice what? that the man <laughs> has argyle socks. Yep, that's a plot point. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah. Woof, woof. Uh, so, coming up in a couple days, Claude... or. Eastman. They call him Eastman mm. in the film, so I guess we should Eastie just boy. call him. Yeah, Mr. Easter. Mr. East. He has got a concert coming up with the violinist Max. They, he has a he has a rehearsal. So uh, he, they're in this theater with all these auditions playing, and his wife is like, "Man, I'm so bored. I'm just gonna go home and have a nap." Yep. And he's like, "Wow, you've been having a lot of naps lately." A, a, it's a? almost like you've been sleeping, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "Yep, been sleeping a bunch." And so she goes home to have a nap. Yeah. And then just after that, Maxi Boy comes over and he's like, "Yeah, how's it going, um, my dude? What's up? How's it hanging, bro?" And then he puts his feet up on the chairs, and we see that he has argyle socks. Da da da. Da da da. And then he's like, um. 
Does he say something like, I'm going to go have a nap or something? He says no, something he says, uh, I've got to go home and rehearse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because he's got, like, concerts and stuff coming up, and he's like, huh, you're also going home, eh? Eh? You're gonna go and rehearse? And then, uh, then one of the, the people helping with the auditions leans over and is like, so what do you think of him? And he's like, I think he should be castrated. Um, (laughs) and the audition guy's like, what? He's not that bad. (laughs) Yeah, that was good. But I'm bummed. Nice. It's, it's a joke in a comedy, and I like it. Yeah, I, I liked it. It was one of my favorites. So he rushes over to Max's house to see if you know his wife is there, and yep. uh, and he finds on the floor a pumpkin earring on the floor, which, as we saw before, Norman and Eastman went and bought their wives pumpkin earrings for halloween which is yes, coming up but also norman did as well yes because it's actually norman's wife that uh is sleeping with max yeah not his wife but he thinks it's his wife exactly what a what a mix-up oh it's just a regular misunderstanding i'm sure this won't go on for the next hour it w- will so he gets super pissed yeah and this- he argues with his wife yeah, oh, because he goes oh. home, he goes home to, like, watch the door to just berate her when she gets home from being with Max, as, like, as it is in his mind. Whereas, in yeah. reality, the camera zooms out, we see him on a chair, staring at the door, and directly behind him, she's just sleeping on the couch. <laughs> yeah. Which was a really so good if- shot. Yeah, yeah, it was good. So, literally, if he just stood up and turned around, he would have seen that his wife was already there sleeping, and he, yeah. none of the the rest of the entire film would have happened. Mm-hmm. But, film has to go on. Yeah, he's just angry at her when they both wake up. He's just like, hey, yep. you had a nap, eh? <laughs> You're having a nap. You're sleeping, huh? Sleeping all around, are we? They, they never mention names of who and what. And this, of course, leads to misconstrusions. Yeah, it's Ooh. almost like if you just talked to someone, uh, yep. you wouldn't have to try and get in Yeah, killed. no, if he had ever talked directly about them sleeping together, this never would have happened. Absolutely but not. it's a comedy of errors. Oh, well. Uh, it's yep. still pretty funny. I like it. It's good fun. Yeah, no, no, it's good. Um, um, also, apparently, Danielle knows that Norman's wife is sleeping with Max. That's like a plot point. They all know, yeah. aside from Norman. Everyone knows. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, uh, even the even the manservant uh, knows. <laughs> yeah, that's um, true, which is good. It's funny. Uh, at this point, I noted down in my notes and that the detective probably tailed the wrong girl. Oh, yes. But, like, at this point, it was like, ah, so that's what actually happened. Mm-hmm. Then the next scene's great. The, um, the violin battle? Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's more misconstrusions where... Uh, he and Maxwell try and talk it out, but they never mention names of who banged who. Mm. So each party thinks they're talking about the other thing, and it's all a big misunderstanding. It's a massive misunderstanding. He's like, oh, it'll only happen a couple more times, and then we'll be done. <laughs> yeah, he does say that, which was pretty funny. And then pats <laughs> his cheek. <laughs> Uh, so, which is very funny. That was great. It's good because you know he's confirming what Eastman thinks, which is not yep. true. But yep. you think it is? It's just classic but, comedy. It's good fun. Classic, good fun. Yeah. Even the dogs love it. My dog um, loves this movie. <laughs> yeah, big fan. She watches it daily. Absolutely. <laughs> anyway, yes, the next scene is my favorite scene of the film. Yeah, They're fiddling at each other. It's oh, a good time. It's great. It's yeah, it's really, really good. good. Uh, where they both pick up a fiddle because they're at this like restaurant party celebrating their new uh, something concert one-off thing that's concert, coming up. Yeah, yeah, concert that's coming up, and so the the whole crowd's you know cheering them on, and they're doing a little they're gonna do a little fiddle thing, but they mm. start doing a bit of a fiddle off because mm. he's mad and he's aggressively fiddling at him, and so they start you know battling of the fiddles keeps going and they go back and forth and back and forth and it's really good it, it is it's, great it's a great scene and then eventually it ends by him fiddling so hard and aggressively at him that he knocks into a table <laughs> yeah and falls over which was great i loved it and the music was really good because mm. they're like it's good it's very good it was very good. aggressive very nice 
Uh, so Danielle now knows that Eastman is annoyed at her yes. for some reason. So they go back home, and this scene was kind of funny, but also maybe perhaps didn't age well because he's asking, "Hey, why why did Max come over to the house at one thirty at one thirty a.m.?" And she's like, "Oh, he wanted to play gin rummy, you know. He, he wanted to play a game, but I was, you yeah. know, I was tired. I thought he I thought he wanted to play a game or something because she knows that they used." their house to mm. bang yeah instead of instead of his or um norman's because obviously he needed some place to bang and theirs was the best place at the time but he thinks she's talking about letting him in to bang her exactly big yeah. misconstrued in we see on the tape uh like near the end of the film that it like won 40 10 minutes after he came in um norman's wife came in as well so yes yeah. But there's some lines and stuff where it's like, uh, yeah, you know, then I went to bed. I had no idea what was going on. And she's and he's like, it happened while you were sleeping. And that was a bit. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. No. And then she's like, yeah, in and out. I didn't even notice. <laughs> that was a bit. Um. Yeah. Look. <laughs> and then she gets angry. So she storms out. Yeah. They're, they're arguing. She, she calls up the lady that's sleeping with max yeah um and for some reason that she wanted her to laugh at the end of the phone call i don't know why to cheer her up not, yeah but it's not brought up ever again there's no point to this scene <laughs> yeah apart no, you're right. from her angrily like pretending to laugh you're right it's such a dumb laugh. <laughs> it's a completely pointless scene like <laughs> what <laughs> i can't but, like, I feel like it's something that they were going to put in later that he was like, oh, you were laughing about it on the phone. I saw you. But it never happened. Mm. It was very weird. It might be to set up the fact that she laughs maniacally, which does come back. Yes. But also not yeah. really. <laughs> so, not know. really, yeah. But what really got me was, was that mm. uh, she goes to a cinema, he follows her in, and is, like, poking around the cinema and sees a couple... I guess making out, and then he just screams at him. <laughs> yeah, because he thinks it might be her. Yeah, because they have the same hair, but it's not. No. So he just jumps this random couple, and then he gets arrested. We just got to him <laughs> being bailed out. But like, yeah. what was kind of funnier was um, we later see her talking about that experience. <laughs> I've got this. I've got this quoted because it's great. Uh, she says, uh, "Can you believe a maniac attacked two? people in the theater and he says oh man this town is full of weird people <laughs> oh yeah that was good <laughs> oh man who could it have been <laughs> that was, was really very funny. funny i loved it that was great um, oh yeah and that's the scene with the pig mask sorry that scene where she talks about this weird person attack also starts off with her wearing a pig mask and just oh. making snorting noises to yeah, she, wake him up. She, she's wearing like like a bed dress as well. Yes, she's wearing like a nighty or whatever, but has this rubber pig mask. That was so it's, good. It looks like the a uh, one you would wear to rob a bank. Yeah. Like in in um what movie? Uh, like yeah, like Dark Knight, opening of Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, of, opening yeah. of Dark Knight or something like that, you know. Yeah, or totally. like a uh, payday two or something, something like that, mm. you know, where they have all these crazy rubber masks on. That is that is very true. Yeah, it is yeah. quite a bit like that. And then he's it's like, "Take funny. that thing off, Halloween, gross, don't like it." That's very funny. And um, um, and then yeah, he goes to uh, the, uh, the 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 butler. Hypothetically, if this was a man that was uh, and his wife was cheating on him, and he's like Norman, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, 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 no. Just a hypothetical friend. You don't know him. And he's like, yeah, sure, sure. Because he also knows that Norman's wife is cheating. Everyone knows. <laughs> That's true. But he's like, what would you do? And so then the butler picks up a vegetable. An eggplant. Yeah. An eggplant. And it's like, this is what you do. You treat her very nice. Mm. You treat her. And he's mm. like, oh, my badish. And he starts making out with an eggplant. Yeah. Um, great. Then he lays it very gently down, and he he, he whispers sweet nothings, 
And then he picks up a knife and he stabs it, stabs it, stabs it over and over. And he slams it, cutting it into pieces. And he's like, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, he's like, well, can't yeah. argue with that logic. Guess I gotta go and kill both Max and my wife. Yep. Hates that. And then the uh, the private investigator is watching old tapes with his wife. And they yep. notice that on the one for the Eastman case, there is a little bit of video at 1.40 that shows Norman's wife rocking up to the apartment and he's like, oh no, I screwed up. And I'm going to go call up Eastman. So he calls up Eastman and is like, hey, you you know, uh, you know, Max, right? You know about that. And yeah. Eastman's like, Max, you mean the fornicating fiddleman? <laughs> Don't worry about him. This is going to be his last performance ever. <laughs> <laughs> Hangs up phone. I Doesn't just, even listen to the detective. I just really like the term, the fornicating fiddleman. <laughs> it's, yep. it's, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. That's uh, a good line. I like that one as well. Yeah. Uh, we have a concert. Yep. And it's very nice. It's a very good concert. We we even get a glimpse into him as he's as he's conducting away, and it sort of zooms into his eye, almost like we're seeing into his mind's eye. Anyway, I'm sure that's not important. No. Um, it's not like the music from that particular piece of music that he's conducting plays throughout this entire sequence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to indicate that it is is a dream. It's not. What? It's not. No, no. This is a real. No. Yeah. No. Anyway, we 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 get to the next the next bit. It's after the concert even mm. though the music's still playing in the background. Don't worry about it. No. They have a talk and he's like, "Yeah, that was great." How about we go get a drink together? I'll go get my wife as a, as a peace offering. And they're like, yeah, sure, sure, sure. So they do that. And while they're doing that, he's got some recording devices. Mm. And his wife is laughing and screaming. In yeah. fact, she's screaming quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, weirdly so. An awful Almost lot. perfectly. Uh, and so he's recording that. And he's like, perfect. I've got it. I've got it all. He goes home. He also records a bit with him uh, trying to talk a little bit like Max. A bit weird. What's yep. he doing? What's he planning? Don't know. Don't know what he could be doing. Anyway, he takes them both home and he's like, how about you go get dressed? Uh, I'll get us another drink. Yeah. And so he goes, he goes, prepares another drink, but Sprinkles laces the drink a little bit. Yeah. A little bit of knockout pills. A little bit of knockout know? pills. He gives it to Max. Max collapses. Because he's a dum-dum. Uh, Got him. And now, now Music's still playing. a little bit of background. Max is, uh, they're all wearing masks. And yes. Max is wearing the pig mask. So what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's Halloween. Yeah. So they were all wearing the, the masks. Max, he's wearing the pig mask. Of course. He's wearing the pig mask. But he was. Mm. He's taking it off now. And instead, our main character, he, he picks up the mask and he's like, I'm going to pretend to be good old Maxie boy. Yeah. So uh, he um mask. he grabs a knife. He grabs yep. a knife. He tells Daniela to meet him down in the lobby. And while she's yep. waiting at the elevator, he attacks her. And so it's all on the security footage, and so the the guy downstairs sees it, and he's like, oh, I'm going to call the police. And the police get called up. Mm -hmm. They see that this person's being murdered by a person in the pig mask. And so while this is happening, he goes back inside, grabs Maxwell, put the pig mask back on Maxwell, lifts him up while he's still unconscious, Mm -hmm. drags him out, starts pretending to have a fight with him. Yep. And then pretending to knock him out with a punch. Yep. The police grab him. He gets framed for the murder. And everyone lives happily ever after. Yeah, it ends with him uh, just laughing maniacally as Max is being sent off to prison. And, you know, that's that's the end of the movie. That's how it ends. Except, Sandra, it's not. As the camera zooms out again of his eyeball... Because it was all a daydream. Now, number one main difference to the original movie Mm. is that this happens three times in the original film. Three times? Wow. We get three daydreams. The first one is quite similar to this. Instead of a recording device, he has a record that he plays on, like, like he records himself screaming uh, Max's name on a record and then speeds it up so it sounds like Daniel... (laughs) 
Ah, right, yeah. Which is very s- silly, but it's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's they've updated the technology. Since yeah, it's then. all. It's also definitely Pretty more much. realistic in this one because that is not how that works. That's yeah, not that's, how that's, record that's, works. Yeah, that's not how a record. Yeah, that's. But that's... it's still funny. But for the most part, it's quite similar to um to how yeah. It what's plays what's out. the what's the third daydream? What's so the, the second one? He can like he forgives Danielle for cheating on him and basically gives her a lot a lot of money to run off and divorce. Okay. The second one is forgiveness, and then the third one's suicide. He plays Russian roulette with them, but 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 he dies. <laughs> the third one's weird. <laughs> wow. Okay, dark. Yeah. From this point onwards in the film, we see uh, Eastman trying to reenact his daydream, but everything keeps going wrong. And then Everything we... goes off. First off, he tries to invite uh, Maxwell to a drink, yeah. but Maxwell does not want to come along at all. He's like, eh, another night, I'm tired or whatever. Mm. He's like, so he has to insist, and he pushes and pushes and pushes and eventually convinces him. Yeah. He's also got to make sure that he's wearing tails as well that yes because he was going to get changed and he's like no 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 we have to be wearing the same thing i mean you wearing tails Mm. and so he manages just to convince them yeah and so then he convinces her and they get there and it's not a raucous, screaming laugh as they get drunk it's just a nice quiet evening yeah he's trying to record her screaming but it's not working because like max is also laughing and uh, you know it's not that it's not, it's not that energetic. He also gets the story yeah. wrong, the story that he wants him to tell him. He gets the, the yeah, premise yeah, yeah. of it wrong. It's just not It's just not going great at the moment. No. He's also trying to find the tape recorders and he keeps, like, kicking everything over, which is the funniest yeah, yeah. part about the original as well. Like, when he's trying to get everything working, he just destroys the apartment. <laughs> and that's when he, like, throws a, uh, a freaking lamp over by mistake and everything. Yeah. yeah, that's great. It's really good. It's very good. It was just fumbling around. Where did I put them? Whereas in the daydream, it was like a two second scene. Mm. And then in the original, around this point when the recording stuff isn't working, he then switches to the other plans. He's like, all right, I forgive you. So he tries to write out the divorce notes, but then the ink just spills everywhere. And then he's like, right. all right, let's play Russian roulette. But then like he can't find the bullets. <laughs> so it's very silly. It just goes on for a so bit all, Oh, I see. All of, He goes through all of his plans. Eh, I guess that's, that's, that makes a little more sense. It's a little but, yeah. funnier in the original, but mm. it's still pretty pretty funny in this one so yeah yeah, yeah yeah um he has to buy masks off random strangers because she didn't bring the halloween mask like he thought she did yeah so he just buys random masks that was very so good his plan still works then once they get back to his apartment uh maxwell won't drink a drink mm. until he he finally says he wants a cola <laughs> except <laughs> then they don't have any cola except his wife has taken the last one. So he snatches it off her yeah. very rudely. Yeah, he, he can't crush the pills either. He's having a lot of trouble crushing yeah, the pills. Yeah, in the daydream, it, it just, like, he could crush the pills magically. So he just, just puts the, like, powdery, powdery pill in. Um, but then he ends up drinking that. Also, they're not sleeping pills. They're tranquilizer because they don't have oh, any yeah. sleeping pills. So he just gets really high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just gets super high. But then Maxwell falls asleep anyway. <laughs> yeah, he knocks him out with the door by accident. He yeah. knocks him on the head and then Max just faints. It's funny. And then, uh, l- l- like, he grabs a wooden spoon instead of a knife because he's so yeah. high. <laughs> yeah. And then he goes to stab his wife, but the wife bumps into the detective mm. who explains that he's trying to kill her. Because uh, he thinks she slept with Maxwell. So she storms back in to find him struggling with Maxwell's unconscious body, super high, mm. just super high. He's collapsed on the floor and he's like, oh, hi, honey. And she just slaps him. <laughs> yeah. And storms off. And yeah, and then she storms off. The detective tells Eastman everything that's been happening. Yeah. Max wakes up and, and learns. They all learn. And then... Uh, and then he tries to apologize to Danielle, but she's not having none of it until yep. he says, I'm really sorry, and then faints, and then she carries him back up. And that was the fabulous romantic ending. Uh, now, the ending Wonderful. of the original, and why I think it's better, is because she never figures out that he was trying to kill her. Ah, yes. Um, I think I like I would like that better. Yeah, she has no idea, and I, uh, like... He's grilling them both, and 
like that version of Max is like, yeah, you know, I've been sleeping with Norman's wife, uh, but I'll end that. It's all over. And he's like, oh, oh of course. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> and then like it ends with like romantic music playing and then like being like happy again. And nice. it's, um, I think I prefer that ending. I don't know. But this yeah, ending yeah, is yeah. also pretty uh, good. Well, I think, I think I would have preferred the same ending, except instead of the wife bumping in the detective, she's, she's storming out and they just sort of pass. And he, he does, the detective maybe does a double take, but then rushes over to Max and yeah. then explains. And then Max comes out and he's like, oh, sorry, I've been so crazy tonight. I've just been super tired lately because of the concerts and stuff. And she's like, mm. oh, that's fine. And they're all forgiven. And then he collapses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that would have been, been a better ending. You're right. But like still... This is a good. This is a good remake. Yeah, it's a good film. It's a good film. What do you think? Yeah, you, you give it. I think it's definitely better than pretty much all the movies we've done. Oh yeah. I mean, oh, I still think El, El Norte is better. Than oh, El, actually, yeah, no, yeah. El Norte is probably better. El Norte was quite good. Um, um I would give this a goodie. Still, I hmm. think I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. If I were to rate this out of stars, which I really don't want to do, but I may as well. Uh-huh. Like, the original might get four, a, a four, maybe? A four? Yep. And this might get a three. So, you know, they're still ah, pretty close, right. but still, I do prefer still the original. A, still a goodie, but not quite as good as the old, old yeah. one. Mm. Um, which makes me not want to give this one a goodie, because then I'll just, just say, go watch the old, old one. But, but, for example, all of my friends who have seen both versions, like Ben... For example, you know, he sent it in. He watched it this, this week. He also likes the remake. You know, like most people yeah. don't mind the remake. It's not as yeah, good, yeah, yeah. but, you know, it's still funny. So, yeah. So, let's give a, give this bad boy a goodie. All right. Give a slap a goodie on him. There good, we go. Good two goodies from us for Unfaithfully Yours. This is the part where we come up with a, a sequel or a prequel or a bit we would change. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know your one. Your one is just to change it to the old movie. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> funny jokes. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, no, the uh, sequel I had Mm. focuses on Norman, but he finds out that his wife's been cheating. And it pretty much goes through the same steps of this movie, but almost uh, in a parallel. Right. Except that by the end, uh, when he goes to murder Max and her, uh, he's he's just stopped um, by his own ineptitude Mm -hmm. and then goes to jail. And we see scenes of him uh, finding his wife at home and then just Maxwell jumping out the window or whatever. <laughs> you know, the yeah. classic. I don't know. That's good. I don't That's really good. have much for this one. Yeah, what it's kind of hard. I think, I don't know, I'm kind of, I, I, I was kind of thinking of doing the same sort of thing as you, but now that I think about it, maybe like a, like a modern, modern remake, you know? There's about Ooh, 40 yes. years for all, there's like 30 years in between the original and this one, so, you know, there's about 30 years between this one and now, so just do one set now uh, with the age of the internet as well. Could be fun to play around with that, maybe? Mm-hmm. Um, maybe re- reverse the roles as well, maybe? Oh, yeah, no, that'd be good. I like that. He's an Instagram influencer, and she's a pop star or something. I don't know. Something yeah, like that, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd like a, yeah, yeah, a female remake. That's great. I love that. And... Because then, yes, she she goes crazy and yeah. tries to murder him. Anyway, those are, 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 are our sequels. It is now time, and I'm really interested. I always say this, but this time I'm genuinely interested to see what the general public thought of this movie. So take it away. Ah, yes, it's time for r- 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 Raving Reviews. Nice. This is the part of the show where I get the, the voice of the public, the voice of the people, not the voice of the corporate shills. Ew. That are the professional reviews. No, we want the public, specifically the public of Rotten Tomato audience critical reviews. Mm. This week, literally like half of them are just like, I like the first one better. (laughs) (laughs) So I didn't include most of those. So apart from that, there wasn't many. Yeah, yeah. So I've only got got, uh, like four of them. Mm -hmm. Um, But they're all right. Uh, Like Don, He, he has the voice of the public. In, in a nutshell, uh, really, really funny, explanation mark, explanation mark, explanation mark. Nice. And that's it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's the review. 
All right. Let's... What do you think that is? It's Why? really, really funny, Sandra. It's really, I think it's really, really funny. I mean, a lot of exclamation marks usually leads me to yep. believe five out of five, and I'm just going to go with my gut. Or am I misleading you? Have you thought about that? Do you think I would take one that has a really active sort of thing and then it's actually like a 3.5 or something? I mean, you would do that. I would, absolutely. But do I believe that you have currently done that? I am, yeah. in many ways, the Otis and or Milo yeah, actor absolutely. trusting you, the yes. director, to not throw yes. me over the side of a cliff while yes. making a bad movie. But would I, though? <laughs> you would throw a cat over a Absolutely. cliff. Absolutely. I would yeet that furry <laughs> It's like a three, then. I don't know. It's probably That's five. a five out of five! <laughs> oh, you idiot, Sandro! You complete fool! I should have doubled down. That's the theme of this episode. Oh, well. <laughs> nah, I really took you on the loop there. <laughs> I just, I just... Well, Sorry, I, guess, I couldn't help I, myself. I guess I'm just a dead cat, then. Yep. I just threw you off the cliff. You were about to jump off the cliff, and then you were like, nah, I wouldn't do that, and so I just picked you up and <laughs> yeeted you off. <laughs> Anyway, Brian says, I didn't like this one. Dot, 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 dot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just didn't like this one. One? One? That doesn't seem like it's bad enough for a point five. I'm just going to go one. It's 1.5. All right. Just because he doesn't like it doesn't mean it doesn't deserve an extra point five, Sandra. Come on. I mean. Now we have. Asterix, 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 Charlie, asterix, asterix, asterix. Nice. Just wanted to leave those asterisks in because I thought, uh, thought that was good. Yeah. It was a good not? name. Good movie worth watching. <laughs> that was all in capitals. That sounds like every single positive review. Yes. <laughs> good movie show. worth watching. Uh, uh, it's all in capitals. All in capitals, like, you know. which again but, leads me to believe five, and I'm going to double down on that five. You're, you're doubling down on five? You're it's not, not. going to go three out of five? No, I'm going five, even though I know it's probably not, but five. It's three out of five! <laughs> 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 I brought you back, you fool! Uh, you fool! Of course it's a 3.5. Good movie worth watching. That doesn't mean it's the best movie. Yeah. Go watch it now. And finally... We have a, a great review, a great review by Bill, which really sums up his feelings. Uh, plunges to the depths mm. of disillusionment. Mm. Both this movie and the viewer. That's a two. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's actually a one out of five. Yeah. They really didn't like this film. <sighs> It's the depths of delusionment. It plunges the viewer into the depths of delusionment. I disagree, but sure. <laughs> yeah, no, he's wrong. It's a great movie. Okay. So yeah, I've that's raving reviews. But... Sandro, still bad at this. I can't believe you messed up that first one. It was obviously a five out of five. <laughs> that is the episode. <laughs> Woo! Thank you for listening. As always, we are on every social media and every single podcast platform. We've got an email as well. Shoot through your thoughts on anything. Every single thing. What do you think of water? Let us know. Oldiebuddygoodypod at gmail.com. Well, Sandro, I have many deep, integral feelings about water. So I mm. hope someone asks me about those. Because okay. then we could go on another hour tangent about water. Is there anything else we got to mention? Not really. That's everything. No, not really. we got like Facebooks, Instagrams. I never use Instagram. Links in. Maybe I will one day. How about we plug our next episode, which features a certain film that you have to choose. Oh, I'm looking at this list. I know which one you'll pick. If you don't pick it, I'll be angry. <laughs> okay. So... Uh, we have Blame It On Rio. Cool. Two best friends go on holiday with their daughters. Then hilarity ensues as each of the friends falls for their <laughs> other's daughter. <laughs> wow. That's great. <laughs> I wish I had read that in advance because I wouldn't have had such enthusiasm. That is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Michael Caine is in it. Is he? Yeah. Michael Caine? What's he doing? What's what's 80s Michael Banging Caine doing? his friend's daughter, apparently. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. I almost want to pick that, but I'm going to Ooh. hear what your other thoughts are. But that Ooh. is high up on my list at the then moment. Then we have Crackers. All right. Hopefully not the, the racist slur. A group of small-time out-of-luck thieves mm -hmm. led by Donald Sutherland. Oh, yeah. Attempt to rob a neighborhood pawn shop. Hmm. Oh, apparently it's a remake of an old Italian film from the 50s. Nice. Then we have Lassit. 
Doctor, a heist film with uh, Tom uh, Selleck. Oh, yeah. He has uh, to break into a German embassy to steal some gems. Some so gem far, gems. we've got a film about friends falling in love with their daughters in two heist Oof. movies. And two heist movies. Well, what is there's, one, there's one, one last little movie that I've... It was sort of in the middle, but I've I've left it till the end, just okay. to, just to, just to put more emphasis on it, you know, just in case. Um, it's uh, by Kevin Bacon, actually. Oh, uh, I love Kevin Bacon. Well, it, it features him. He he moves to this uh, small town that has banned dancing. Oh, you're talking about the movie Dirty Dancing. Yes, Dirty Dancing. You got it in one. I thought I thought if I told you to, no, it's actually Footloose. Hey, hey, greatest movie of dancing ever. Is it? Just yes. Are you sure? Fact. Do you want to? Do you want to die? I will on that die hill? on this hill. That it is about some random people. That's in a town that's banned dancing for no reason whatsoever. Are you just saying that because it's your mum's favourite movie? Possibly. <laughs> um, but I live here, so I don't want to die. But yeah. Um, okay. It's in fact my mother's favourite movie, I think. So Last time I checked. Nice. That's fun. Um, or just a movie she really likes, to be honest. I don't know if it's her favourite. <laughs> so the two heist films sound fun. I'm going to rule them both out. Because the other two, I feel like we will have more fun talking about. So yep. it really is between Michael Caine falling in love with a daughter. Mm. Not his daughter, a friend's daughter. Just going to make yes, that clear. Not, yeah, not his daughter. Don't want to take that out of context. That would be inappropriate. Oh, oh boy. Uh, and and Dirty Dancing. Um, I think because like we haven't picked a film that, uh-huh. that is considered a classic. I guess El yes. Norte kind of is, but it's not really known by many people. So, you know. Yeah, I mean, Michael Caine is in it, so you have to pick it, obviously. <laughs> We're doing Footloose. Hey, Footloose! <laughs> I'm Caine. I, I've seen it, like, years ago. I haven't seen it in ages. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, I haven't seen it since I was, like, 10 or something, so <laughs> it'll be cool. It's and with a favourite quote. Mine is not a quote from the movie, because oh, wow. I didn't write many down. My favourite quote is instead the tagline on, on the poster. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. A beautiful woman is like a symphony. Oh, no. It can drive you crazy if you think someone else is scoring. Hey! Oh, <laughs> snap! Oh, snap! Oh, the 80s. They're wow. Great. What's yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sandro, have you... Can you believe... That recently, a uh, maniac attacked two people in the theatre. Oh man, this town's full of weird people. Who could it have been? <laughs> <laughs> that is a really, that is a really it's fun good. quote. Ah, uh, it's yeah, good. It's a good time. Uh, the tagline for Hot Dog the Movie is, there's more to do in the snow than ski. Because <laughs> <laughs> they've bad. <laughs> That's, That's the only good one we've wow. done so far. <laughs> that, what a poster quote. New wow. segment, poster quote. Let's do Why it. Why is it called Hot Dog That Dad? Sorry. 